Got the old Sportster loaded up, and I am headed west. Welcome back, everybody. My name's David Shepard, and I'm about to ride this 31-year-old Harley Sportster barn fine 2,000 miles from here in New Jersey out to Colorado. So if you didn't see the last video, my dad and brother found this bike sitting in a barn in New Jersey. It sat for 22 years, unridden, and uh, hadn't even been run in 22 years. So I flew into New Jersey, spent a few days working on the bike, put some new parts on it that I'll show you guys, and uh, did everything I could to get it ready for a 2,000 mile journey back home to Colorado. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me, see if the bike will make it, see if I can make it, and uh, I'm gonna trust in the Lord every step of the way as I always do. So I'm gonna start this, this video with a quick verse of scripture. John 14, one says, let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Trust in God, trust also in me. So in this verse, Jesus is calling us to not be troubled, not to be afraid, but to trust in God and his son, Jesus Christ. So there's a million and one things you could worry about with the bike, with the traffic, with the weather, all that. But I choose to put my hope and trust in Jesus Christ. And it's my prayer that you will do the same. So thanks for listening. Now I'm going to show you guys this bike. Like I said, if you didn't see the last video, I spent a few days getting this bike ready. Um, my dad and brother pulled it out of a barn and uh, brought it over to my brother's shop. And I just went ahead and started replacing definitely the rubber parts, anything we thought might... Uh, thought might give us any trouble or give me any trouble just from the age of the bike it has very very low miles i'll show you there's like this bike's hardly ever been ridden so very low miles but you know the rubber parts and things that just fail due to age so put new tubes and new tires on it um also did a new drive belt you know these harleys are belt driven so got a fresh belt on there and flush the brakes i also did some new brake pads and greased the wheel bearings uh changed the oil and the primary fluid as well and then i just added some things that were going to make a long trip on a little sportster a bit more comfortable so i added this cheap amazon fairing here get a little wind off the chest and uh some highway pegs as well be able to stretch out i had these old uh buell throwover saddlebags laying around used to have a Buell out here so we got those and uh that's about it new showy bluetooth helmet and uh some extra fuel i think this is going to be key so i've got two of these 1.5 liter bottles so just about a gallon i guess of, of spare fuel because that's one thing everybody warned me on this trip these old sportsters have the tiny little peanut tank which i think it looks pretty cool but man it's only about two gallons of fuel so you know, you're going about 100 miles at best, maybe even on reserve. I'm about to find out, but got some spare fuel and uh, praise God, I think I've got everything I need and prepared about the best I can. So what do you guys think? 2,000 miles on a 31-year-old Sportster. This is, I guess I didn't mention in this video, it's a 92 XLH 1200. And the story is um, the original owner, gentleman here in New Jersey, he was a CPA here and he bought it and hardly rode it. So he bought it brand new in 92. He put it in the paper in a classified ad in 97 for $7,950. And the gentleman we got it from bought it out of that classified ad. And uh, he, I guess his wife said he wrote it twice. He wrote it home from the seller and then he wrote it again when they moved houses and he wrote it to his new home. And I guess he had had a motorcycle accident and uh, his daughter didn't want him riding anymore. So he just never rode this bike. So it's a 92 Sportster and uh, looks looks almost brand new. I mean, there are some, if you get up close, there's some little spots of corrosion. There is like a little bit of rust on the wheels, just maybe some moisture from sitting in that barn. But overall, pretty darn good looking bike for being that old and... We just started, we're about 20 miles into our trip, and that is the true mileage on the bike, 489 miles. So, truly not even broken in. When I changed the primary fluid, there's a magnet in there, and there's some really fine material, but just break-in material, and even riding it locally the last couple days, I could feel that engine kind of breaking in. So, truly not even broken in, and it just sat in a barn for... Um, that gentleman, he had it registered, again, he hardly wrote it, but he had it registered 
up until 2001. So I know, uh, or we could assume it hasn't run for, uh, what is that, 22 years. So praise God, did everything I think I could do to get this bike ready. And uh, I'm going to depart. We're in uh, leaving South Jersey here. We're kind of in the beautiful Pine Barrens. And uh, we're going to head out, get across, get through Philadelphia. And uh, I'm going to try to take some back roads. I don't want to slab the interstate the whole way. So I'm going to take some back roads uh, through Pennsylvania. It's pretty scenic. Try to avoid the PA Turnpike. Not a fun road on a bike, if you ask me. Really expensive tolls and all that. So I'm going to take some back roads and then uh, just keep heading west. And I'm going to take you guys along with me. I'm going to trust in the Lord every step of the way for protection and provision. And uh, just to bring me, lead me where he wants to and lead me to the people he wants me to come across on this trip so thanks for following along please subscribe to the channel and uh let me know if you think this old bike is gonna make it and uh let me know if, if you would take a, a cross-country trip on a 30 year old uh untested bike that's been sitting in a barn so thanks for watching guys praise the lord for his protection and provision and uh i'll catch up with you guys on the road here we go just about 200 miles into this journey and uh praise god everything seems to be going pretty well did notice a little bit of a rattle kind of a tick out of the engine that i couldn't tell i didn't think i heard it before and uh i don't know maybe a little lifter noise or something i know these bikes have hydraulic lifters that uh are known to be the best but really don't know seems to be running okay getting decent fuel mileage and uh hey we're cruising along so we're going to keep on going, just uh, stopped here to stretch the legs, take a little break on some really nice roads. You could probably hear US 30s right up there, but been on some back roads here in Pennsylvania and uh, it's been absolutely beautiful. Nice weather so far and uh, just really nice. I've been trying to take some secondary roads and not just slabbing on the interstate. Like I said, definitely avoiding the Pennsylvania Turnpike to be sure. So. Uh, really nice secondary highways and praise God we've just uh, been cruising uh, a couple gas stops already obviously with that little tank can't go too far only about 100 miles really but nice to uh, do a quick fuel stop stretch the legs and uh, found this little park here to uh, chill out for a minute and uh, like I said just gonna take a little stretch drink a little water and get back on the road so we'll see uh, we'll catch up with you in a minute Pretty nice view up here. Awesome, awesome roads. We are right at the summit of the Lincoln Highway. You can see these antennas behind me. We're right at this high point on uh, US 30. Kind of parallels I-76 or the PA Pike. And I've never taken this route across Pennsylvania. And instead of going through, we're right above one of the tunnel bores on the pike. Uh, but rather than going through the tunnel on this road, it switch backs up to this summit. And then there's a bunch of switchbacks headed down. And man, what an awesome, awesome road. Super fun to ride. Pretty cool view over here. And uh, praise God for super awesome roads. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is this bike is definitely not running 100%. I still hear this rattle, especially when I got a load on it coming up these hills. And once I hit the hills, I noticed... This bike is definitely not making the power it should. It's kind of struggling getting up the hills. So I don't know if it's related. I don't even know if this rattle is the engine itself or if something else has come loose. One thing with these early Sportsters is that it is a solid mounted, rigid mounted engine in the frame. In 2004, they went to a rubber mount engine on these Sportsters. So uh, just coming up the hill here, this mirror completely... Uh, completely loosened up on me so just a ton of vibration out of this bike and things are coming loose so i gotta tighten up that mirror and i'm just gonna see if anything else accessory wise is loose on this bike um but it's possible this rattle kind of a kind of a ticking but i'd say more of a rattle coming from the engine i think coming from the engine so man i don't know i don't know these engines too too well but i do know they have hydraulic lifters so I don't know if uh, the lifters aren't filling up with oil and, and they're kind of collapsed and so they're making noise and also not opening the valves all the way. I don't know if that's possible, but it's running through my head what this noise can be and uh, 
the reduced power as well so not really sure but like i said praise god for beautiful road beautiful views good weather and uh beautiful place to uh at least tighten up this mirror i guess it's yeah that whole turn signal mount as well loosened up so i just gotta go over this bike and see if anything else has come loose and uh i'd start it up and let you guys listen but i honestly don't hear that rattle at idle um i hear it more with a load on the engine so hard to tell when i'm riding with a full face helmet if it's coming out of these rocker boxes yeah those aren't too warm or if it's down low but uh boy i don't know but there's definitely some kind of rattle somewhere on this bike so i'm gonna give it a once over do a good nut and bolt check tighten up these mirrors probably say a prayer here and uh like i said trust in the lord but man look at these views pennsylvania lincoln highway definitely a cool place to ride and uh thankful for the good weather and hopefully i can figure out what's uh what all has loosened up on this bike so i'm gonna get some tools out tighten some things up and uh get back with you guys if i if i find something good Okay, so got this mirror mount tightened up. It was actually, uh, this nut here had backed off a little bit, so sorry about the sun glare, but got that tightened up, and then just kind of put my hand on any everything, at least externally, that I thought might be rattling. Um, this center heat shield was a little bit loose, tightened down on those, you know, they just use hose clamps to clamp around the exhaust pipe, and I had tightened up these when I had the exhaust off, but I never checked the crossover one. So that was a little bit loose. I don't, I just don't know. Don't think that was causing the rattle. Tightened up the uh, air cleaner cover a little bit as well, but didn't find anything that really is making that sound under load. So another brake lever, actually, it's just a little slop in that brake lever. I'll put my foot I'll put my foot on that while I'm riding and see if that goes away. Boy, if that's all it is, <laughs> that would be incredible. But I don't know. Check the pipes, check pegs, everything else. Everything else seems tight. So, you know, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord that everything's okay. Keep cruising and uh, just keep checking on things whenever I stop. So, praise God, I'm going to soak in this view a little bit more and uh, get back on the road here. Dang old rattly sportster. All right, just stop for some gas. I'll be doing that quite a bit on this trip. And I can hear that tick right now, so I wanted to get some footage. Let me know what you guys think. It's pretty mild at idle. on a downshift engine braking down a hill I could really hear it clack 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 so I don't hear it much at idle I don't know if it's gonna come through the video but let me know what you guys think definitely I know these solid mount sportsters are definitely rattly old beasts but something seems a little out of the ordinary to me and like I said the bike is quite a bit down on power so not sure what to think thankfully it still starts every time and keeps keeps running so uh, take a quick little break and get back on the road well made it to a nice hotel here for the night made it with no real issues like I said earlier just got that uh, kind of strange engine rattle going on so thankfully there's actually a Harley dealer just down the street Highland Harley yeah Highland or Highlands Harley right down the street here so might run it by there in the morning, see if they're open tomorrow, and just see if they'd be willing to have a tech just listen to it real quick and see if they think it's anything abnormal or anything out of place, and maybe go from there. But praise God, made it safely to the old Fairfield in here, I believe. So let's get a shower, get some food, get some rest, and uh, I'll see you guys on the road tomorrow. Well, day two is starting out here at the Harley dealer. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm back, day two of this journey. And uh, as you can see, we're right outside Highland Harley-Davidson. We're here in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Didn't quite make it all the way through Pennsylvania. That was kind of the goal for the first day, but left a little later than I wanted to. A few more gas stops than I thought, and uh, a few more stops just to tighten things up and all that. But there happened to be, got a nice hotel here in Somerset, got some good rest, breakfast, all that. And there happened to be Harley-Davidson dealer literally right down the street, half a mile from the hotel. So praise God for that. And my thought is I just want one of their techs to listen to this rattle on the bike and just see maybe they'll say it's nothing to worry about we've heard this before or maybe they'll say this is something we heard before and it definitely is something to worry about but i'm hoping uh they open in about 20 minutes here i'm hoping one of their techs would just be willing to listen to the bike and uh i know tracking down noises especially on a harley is like you know ch chasing the wind sometimes but hoping uh you know these guys are around these bikes all the time and they might have a little more insight so um, I did some research on the internet last night and I guess a lot of different noises and even noises that sound like engine rattles can actually come from the primary. So um, if the primary chain is too tight or too loose or, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in this primary case, you know, if you're not a Harley guy, this is a, there's a chain in here that connects the engine to the transmission and then on the other side, your drive belt goes back to the rear wheel from there so I'm actually gonna I got the Allen wrenches I'm gonna pop this cover off real quick you can actually see the top of the chain and check chain tension right there and then if need be there is a it's over here there's an adjuster bolt right here bolt and a jam nut to be able to adjust tension on that so I don't know I'm kind of hoping it's interesting because you do not hear this noise at idle I started up this morning bike fired right up sounded perfect and uh, I was like oh man maybe it doesn't do it when it's cold and as soon as I kind of rolled halfway into first gear in the hotel parking lot clack 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 I heard the noise so I'll even show you guys start it up for you just so you don't think I'm totally crazy I might be a little crazy when all you got is hours sitting on the bike able to listen to sounds but starts right up it is cold I literally drove over from the hotel there's no heat in the motor but starts right up sounds good and you don't hear that rattle but I don't know if I could do it with one hand but as soon as you let the clutch out and start rolling on the first gear you hear clack 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 so I don't know to me that kind of proves a point maybe it is the primary because until there's really load on the transmission and the whole drivetrain not really hearing it so hey that'd be better than an engine noise to me Again, at an idle, this thing sounds great, and even just free rev. Oh, do hear a little bit. You know, I just don't know. Just don't know. Could be something, like I said earlier in the video, could be something where uh, it's not even in the engine. It's just something loose outside one of the accessories on the bike, but. I don't know. That rattle sure is concerning. Happened to be a Harley dealer right here. So I'm going to hang out for uh, a couple minutes, maybe spend some time in the Word while they wait for them to open up and uh, see if they'll give it a listen and give me any insight on that. So I will keep you guys posted, stick around, and uh, we'll see what they say about this. Maybe I'm crazy. Who knows? But praise God there's a Harley dealer right here. And uh, worst case, we'll uh, check out some bikes while they listen to my phantom sound. Okay, so pulled the little inspection cover. It's actually a fill hole where you fill the primary here, and you can see you can see the primary chain in there. And I've heard everything from three eighths to seven eighths, so you know roughly a half inch of play. And that appears to be about right. I saw one guy measure it from here up to the top of this hole, and it's so this doesn't seem too tight or too loose so I don't know might be the compensator nut coming loose I guess that's common on these but the way it's acting I kind of think it's some kind of primary issue so we're gonna open up in a couple minutes here and uh, I'll let you know what we find dang old Harleys well I feel a little bit stupid but a whole lot relieved so 
these guys in here, I don't know where the sign is, but Highland, Harley Davidson, awesome guys. Craig over in the service department and Bill, their lead tech, came out, checked out the bike, and uh, as soon as he rode it, put it in gear, he knew right away the dang gas tank was loose. Loose bolt on the gas tank, this thing was just knocking against the frame and making that whole racket that we heard. So, praise God, simple fix. They tightened up the tank for me, didn't charge me a thing. Super awesome people here at Highland Harley Davidson in Somerset, Pennsylvania. If you need anything, I would highly recommend it. And uh, these guys certainly appreciated the old Sportster. They just couldn't believe the shape it's in for its age and, uh, you know, the whole barn find story. So, hey, praise God, they tightened me up and uh, even gave me some some good directions for some cool back roads out of here. And uh, unfortunately, it does look like there's some rain coming from the west, which we knew, so. You know, that's all part of the journey. Might get a little wet on this one, but praise the Lord. Bill here, like like I said, their lead tech, he's like, this is a good running bike, man. He's like, you shouldn't have any problems. Sounds good. He snugged up that tank, rattle went away. And uh, again, I feel a little silly. I swear I touched and pressed on every other part of the bike and just couldn't really see the gas tank moving, so I didn't think it'd be loose. But sure enough, that's what it was. These guys fixed me up right away, didn't charge me a dime, and uh, don't have enough good things to say about Highland Harley-Davidson here in Somerset, Pennsylvania. So, all right, guys, we're going to gear up, get back on the road, see what kind of weather we encounter, and uh, trust in the Lord through all of it, and just thankful to him for good people, good, good news about the bike, and uh, pretty funny. Bill took it for a quick ride, and uh, <laughs> he knew right away, and he pulled back up, and he goes, I got bad news. Your gas tank is loose. <laughs> so I'm all fixed up. I'm going to gear up and get back on the road and uh, catch up with you guys soon. Well, here comes the rain. Thankfully, it's, it's not actually raining. It's just barely coming down, but looks like it did rain here. The roads are all wet, so my dang pant legs already got soaked. So pulled in here, found some cover, a little picnic bench at uh, some kind of trailhead here. Again, beautiful part of Pennsylvania. Beautiful roads, awesome scenery. And uh, yeah, bottom of my pant legs got soaked just before I even knew it, just with wet roads. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rain pants out and uh, throw those on. I kept the rain pants and an extra layer hoodie right in this bag, so it's kind of easy to get to, and that's my padded backrest. So I'm gonna throw the rain gear on, and uh, as long as it's not pouring down too bad, I've got, got that good jacket and a uh, good set of rain bibbers I borrowed. So as long as it's not too bad and the roads aren't, aren't like full of water where you're hydroplaning everywhere, I'm going to keep going and uh, take in a little bit of a southern route down towards Morgantown um, to try to avoid the biggest part of this rain cell. But I'm going to gear up, get back on the road, and uh, enjoy these beautiful Pennsylvania backcountry roads. Okay, we're in full rain mode now. See if uh, zoom out. See if you could see the full setup. Just got the vents closed on this jacket, and uh, got these bib pants on. So should be good to go. Gonna put the phone in my pocket instead of in the mount, and uh, just closed close this little cap up. Don't need to charge while it's raining. So kind of in full rain mode, and uh, probably just in time for it to clear up. But hey, praise God, it's not coming down too bad at all. And, uh, man, just sitting here in this beautiful spot. Nobody around. These cars are must be in the it's a trailhead parking, so they must be out hiking. But just a beautiful spot. I'm just thanking the Lord for for this place. And uh, just for uh, just these cool interactions already. That time with the Harley dealer was just awesome. Everybody couldn't believe the condition of this bike. Owner and everybody came out to check it out. And they were just super helpful. And... You know, it almost makes me glad that I heard this rattle and the sound. It allowed me to, to meet some cool people. They got to check out the bike and appreciate and uh, really appreciate what I'm doing on this trip. The one guy, Craig, there, because he recently had a heart attack, and he's just thought it was so cool, and I could tell he was, like, encouraged to see somebody doing a trip like this. So, man, I want to just try to be not so selfish, not so worried about me and my trip and the bike, but try to spread some joy to others and really... Uh, meet other people and include that in my journey here as well. So 
I'm gonna get back on the road, geared up for the rain, and uh, keep moving forward. Well, it's raining good now. That's our, we're geared up. We're gonna keep on cruising and just take our time. Trust in the Lord as always. Beautiful roads nonetheless. Well, this is a cool road. Tiny little back road here in PA. I'm surprised this was even a public road, but sure enough, looks like a driveway, but sure enough, it's a public road, kind of a shortcut here. And uh, thankfully, pretty much out of the rain, I think. So just want to show you guys this awesome little road. This is cool that Pennsylvania has these tiny, tiny little roads, but they're still pretty decent pavement. I mean, pretty smooth, all things considered. It's weird, out west, roads this small would almost always be dirt, so. Pretty cool that uh, you could find little back roads like this and still have decent pavement for a road bike, so. Just wanna show you guys a glimpse of that. We're still picking through uh, the very bottom corner of southwest Pennsylvania, almost into West Virginia now, so. Get back on the road, maybe uh, catch up with you guys at the uh, state border. Yep, definitely raining good now. It's coming down quite a bit. Just pulled under this uh, little bit of a roof opening anyway. And uh, getting to the point where there's actual kind of water pulled up on the road. And it's starting to get a little wet, to be honest. It's kind of right where your knees are tight against these rain pants. Getting a little wet, but... Thankfully it's not too cold out, so that's good and uh, almost to the West Virginia line. So we got a stop plan right across the border. So we're gonna keep pushing and uh, just take it slow. And uh, you know, a little bit less traction in the rain, but you just watch for the, the big water pulled up on the road. Be nice and smooth and gentle on all your controls and should be just fine. Well, made it to West Virginia. This is somewhere in West Virginia, right across the line, and uh, looks like it quit raining for the most part. I'm pretty, uh, pretty drenched at this point. This jacket does a great job keeping me dry, but a little wet on the bottom end, and uh, I don't know if we're in the clear yet, but it's not raining at the moment, and uh, I'm gonna take a little break, dry off, and uh, maybe go into Mrs. D's hoagie shack here and uh, grab a sandwich or something to eat real quick. Oh yeah, got some hot coffee, little cheesesteak sandwich, feeling a whole lot better, drying out a little bit. Got, uh, got the gloves drying out on the engine case here, and uh, yeah, take a little break, dry out as best we can, and then uh, kind of a light drizzle now obviously the roads are all wet still but it's a light little drizzle so get back on the road and hopefully not be uh hopefully we're through the worst of the rain but it looked like a pretty narrow band the further south i went it's a narrower band of rain so that's why we kind of jig jog down through the southwest corner of pennsylvania right across the west virginia line and we're just in that skinny little point of west virginia so won't be long before we're in ohio and uh hopefully through through the worst of the weather. Well, the roads are drying out and this bike is, this engine is freeing up or breaking in or something, but we just turned 900 miles and something happened with this engine where it's got much more power now. It's got way more torque. It's revving out through the whole power band. I think I told you guys yesterday when I was coming up those first hills in Pennsylvania, it was, uh, everybody's, look, everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy stopped on this corner. But anyway, um, it was really struggling to get up those hills and just, you know, I know these aren't the fastest bikes in the world, but it was really struggling going up the hills. And, you know, I know it's loaded down with some weight too, but just didn't seem right to me. But right when we turned 900 miles on that bike on this awesome road here, it seemed like it just broke in and I still don't know if one of the lifters was collapsed from sitting for 20 years and finally just filled up with oil and 
the valves are open all the way. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below if you have any experience with an engine that sat that long or, you know, the guys at the Harley shop were saying it's not even ready for a thousand mile service yet. Like this engine truly isn't broken in. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know, but I'm just glad to say it's got way more power now and it was so fun. This uh, little back road here in West Virginia, just full of twisties. You know, I wasn't pushing it much. I'm just trying to be safe and uh, roads are still a little bit wet, but look how fun this road is. Switchbacks, awesome view down there. And uh, went ahead and pulled the rain gear off because I think we might be out of the soup for the most part here. So probably shouldn't speak too soon. Still looks a bit cloudy over there, but Either way, I'm going to get the rain pants off, try to let my jeans dry out a little bit, and uh, keep on cruising. So, just wanted to give you guys the update, and uh, I'm going to stow this rain gear. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of weird back here. Obviously, it says, you know, danger natural gas, but I don't know why there's all these individual bottles. That's pretty weird. But, anyway... I'm going to uh, pull the rain gear off, stow that away, and uh, jump back on the bike with all its newfound power. Well, made it into Ohio and started cruising down this uh, more of a main highway, bigger, straighter road, and kind of got on the throttle, and bike shut off. Tried to restart it on the fly, no go. So, <laughs> simple fix, but turns out... I don't know if I was really getting on the on the throttle with that newfound power, but turns out at only 74 miles, I had to switch to reserve on the petcock, and uh, what do you know, the bike fires up, so almost out of fuel at 74 miles with this thing. Uh, I'm going to see, I think there's gas pretty close by, so I'm going to try to run it just on reserve. I do have those spare bottles like you saw, but they're kind of a pain to fill, kind of a pain to fill at a gas station I don't somebody could potentially tell you not to do it or whatever so I'm trying to keep those for like real emergency and those big wide open sections out in Kansas and Missouri and stuff so I'm gonna try to run it on reserve and then see how much that tank actually takes at a gas station so <laughs> pretty crazy though I don't know if I was on the throttle a lot more or what but 74 miles out of that tank I thought it was a so I'm sure one of y'all know if these peanut tanks I thought they were 2.2 but um, I don't know we we're getting about 40 miles per gallon I thought so seems more like uh, just under two gallons or at least at least when you need to switch to reserve is maybe around that two gallon mark but anyway seems like we're out of the rain for the moment back on a bigger highway you can't see it but the Ohio River is actually right there that plant that big power plants on the other side of the Ohio River so Kind of a cool cruise, 55 road along the river. So <laughs> we're going to cruise over to a gas station, get filled up, and uh, let you know how much this little peanut tank can take. All right, thankfully there was a gas station just a couple miles away, but 1.8 gallons is all we were able to fit. And we were definitely into reserve there. Hi guys, day three, headed out this morning, finally got an early start, no Harley dealers, no clatter sounds, just going to get on the road, so praise God, bike was safe overnight, even got a little Harley friend here, and uh, we're going to head out and try to make some miles today, a little bit bigger road, we're uh, here in Ohio, crossing into Illinois pretty quick, so we're going to jump on the road and take you guys along. All right, somewhere here in Western Ohio, we're out on just some 55 roads, nice and straight and flat, so we're just uh, feet up on the highway pegs, cruising at this point, so praise God, everything's going smooth, bike's just cruising right along, and uh, kind of getting into the boring states here, sorry to say, if you live here, I'm sure there's some beautiful areas, but we're still cruising secondary roads, avoiding the interstates, and uh yeah, just kind of cruising down these 55 roads, but yeah, they sure are straight and flat and uh, kind of out of that hilly country of eastern Ohio and 
I think I said this morning when I left the hotel that we'll be in Illinois soon, but Indiana is next. I punched in uh, an address in Illinois to get some routing, but still got to get through Indiana. But God willing, we'll be uh, through there today and uh, keep on cruising. I think I'd like to. I think I'd like to stop and wash the bike at some point. It's just, of course, getting bugs and all that, but it's just got that filthy road grime from running in the rain for a few hours yesterday so let's stop and clean the old girl up take a nice little break and uh otherwise i'm gonna try to cruise kind of just stay hammered down through uh the rest of ohio indiana and uh oh. kawasaki concourse that's a traveling bike there and uh yeah just kind of try to get through these states i don't know if i'll film a whole whole lot if, if nothing real exciting happens but definitely pick you guys back up i've got some cool routes planned in colorado to bring me on home so keep following along and uh we'll see if this old sporty can make it all the way terra Haute, indiana birthplace of the coca-cola contour bottle apparently welcome back guys made it to terra Haute here which means we're almost to Illinois, almost all the way through Indiana. Pretty flat, straight roads, you know, not a whole lot interesting to film, I guess, aside from this uh, Coca-Cola bottle museum, but praise God, really nice weather. It's getting pretty hot, to be honest, but that's all right. Once we get moving, get through the towns, and still taking secondary roads, so 55 mile an hour roads for the most part, but pretty awesome. I mean, I haven't touched a bit of interstate this entire trip thus far. I've crossed over Interstate 70 and 71 and whatnot, um, but I have not been on the interstate at all myself. So pretty cool taking these back roads. It has taken a little while. Lots of gas stops, as you know, and uh, I did stop to wash the bike off, get all that road grime from the rain off, and she's uh, all shined up again, running good as well. Picked up a little wash mitt, so got that just drying off back here. A little, little cooled backrest at the moment, but sports just cruising right along. Hasn't burned a drop of oil, hasn't used a drop of oil or leaked anything. I know, you know, I know the bike's kind of brand new mileage wise, but a 92 Sportster and uh, fingers crossed not using any oil. So seems to be running good. I am still, uh, still right about at that. 75 miles on a tank of fuel or at least 75 miles before I have to switch to reserve and <laughs> you know it just is what it is stopping for fuel a lot I do have those spare bottles uh, if I get in a pinch and I don't know exactly how long I could go on reserve but um, I know I switched to reserve at 74 miles one time ran it to about 80 miles and it only took 1.8 gallons of gas so I don't know maybe that's kind of an early reserve and you could run on that a bit further but who knows when we get out in kansas here we might might just find out but got those spare bottles if we need them and uh everything seems good seems tight i was looking at this one brake line just looking at this brake line and speedo cable before i left actually because they were kind of rubbing the fender and sure enough rubbed the paint off right there so i think it's mostly the Let's come around this side. I think it's mostly the speedo cable. Oh no, it's not. It is the brake line that rubs. Wow. <sighs> kind of hard to see, but I don't know if you guys could see. There's a notch worn into the actual brake line, so that's not good. I'm gonna have to see if I could move that away from the fender. I tried before I left because I just didn't want it rubbing on the fender, but just the way it's routed I don't know if there's much I can do about that uh, boy but I definitely don't want it rubbing through the brake line so I'm gonna see if I can't adjust that but otherwise I've been doing some regular checks and uh, if you guys watch the prep video you know I put a new drive belt on here so I've been checking the belt tension I don't think it's loosened up much at all if any so I think the belt tensions good and uh, like I said, not using oil, just uh, using plenty of tanks of gas. So, praise God, we're cruising right along. Sportster's doing well. And uh, between the highway pegs and my uh, 
makeshift backrest here. Oh, and also, don't know if I mentioned this much yet, but also my makeshift seat pad. Got this gel pad that straps around the seat and then also added this foam only because these seats, I mean, they look super comfortable, big old plush seat, but it's just really soft foam. And after you sit on it for about 30, 40 minutes, it just feels like you're sitting on the frame rail. So a little added padding was definitely welcomed. The backrest is nice and uh, yeah, get on these back roads. I could just put my feet up on the highway pegs, lean back and uh, haven't used, these do have that little friction lock sort of cruise control up in here. You could crank that so that the, the throttle stays where you put it. But personally, I don't like to use those. It just kind of freaks me out. So haven't used that at all. But feet up on the pegs, lean back a little bit, and uh, it's a pretty comfy ride. So praise God, everything's going well. I'm going to try to uh, pull that brake line away from the fender somehow, some way. Or if not, I might just, I've got some electrical tape, maybe just wrap that brake line at least so it's not rubbing through there anymore but otherwise everything's going well got a kind of a hotel tentatively picked out actually more of a motel where i could park the bike right outside the room but got a motel uh, plotted out over in illinois we're gonna gain an hour going into central time so that's cool and um yeah we're gonna keep cruising man look at these cars what do we got a freaking lambo and uh C8 Corvette. That's pretty cool. What do you know? Terre Haute, Indiana. Some, some cool cars cruising through. But if we go ahead and address that front brake line and uh, get back on the road here. Alright, so got this taped up. Unfortunately, it's a really hard spot to show you guys. But got this taped up. Some electrical tape. Uh, turns out the Speedo cable was rubbing on the fender but the brake line, it's all taped up now, obviously, but the brake line was actually rubbing on the edge, just the very edge of the sidewall of the tire here at times, and it actually wore a little bit of notch just in the outer coating of this brake line. So, I don't know, got it taped up. I kind of bent this bracket that holds the Speedo cable to pull it, hopefully, away from the tire, but, man, didn't realize that. Uh, I knew it was close, and I knew, if anything, it might just rub on the smooth fender, but... Turns out the brake line was actually catching on the tire a little bit. I guess just different different time steering or different travel in the suspension, but definitely wore a little bit of a notch into the outer rubber on that brake line. So got it taped up. I think pulled away from the tire. I'll just keep an eye on it and uh, keep on pressing ahead here. Definitely don't want to lose the front brake, but I guess that's why you got two, right? Well made it into illinois and big surprise i am at a gas station <laughs> actually uh got to cruise in on us 40 here nice smooth road had a good podcast going and forgot to get gas so i hit about 80 miles we're at 96 oops 96 on the trip odometer now it's about the furthest we've gone and uh yeah definitely uh bike shut off at around 80 miles had to switch to reserve the good news is i'm getting pretty good at switching to reserve on the fly the bike was sputtering came to a stop engine came to a stop reached down flipped it up to reserve bump started it in fifth and kept on cruising all the way here so that's the good news but uh definitely learning how far you could go on reserve which you know i'm guessing i'm guessing this is a pretty early reserve on this tank i'm sure uh you know, let's see, that's 16 miles on reserve. That's the furthest I've pushed it so far. But, you know, I'm sure if you do the old tilt the bike over, get the gas from the other side of the tank down to the petcock, um, you know, I'm sure I could go a bit further. But still haven't dipped into the auxiliary bottles. Praise God for that. And uh, just had to flip it on reserve and keep going. So made it into Illinois. Somehow I crossed the Indiana-Illinois border on some gravel dirt road. It was pretty awesome actually. I have no idea Google put me on this road and it was kind of kind of uh, chip and seal type pavement and then just turned to gravel for a short section and should have stopped and showed you guys but I was definitely on the uh, gravel road for a little while and uh, just by following Google. So I will say the Google Maps, that's, how, that's just how I've been navigating so far. Google Maps and I'm checking the box to avoid tolls and avoid highways and so far it's put me on some awesome routes. I kind of just 
navigate to a next point where I kind of want to generally go and plug that in click avoid highways and and it's been pretty awesome so far I gotta say so I like Google Maps I also like ways for uh, like road hazards and traffic and stuff but that's how I've been navigating so far and uh, awesome secondary roads like I said haven't haven't touched any interstate at all crossed I think under I-70 on that gravel road but just got to make sure I stay near some gas stations with this little peanut tank that's for sure but otherwise we're cruising uh, I think I think the brake line is staying off the tire now um, you know I probably should have it's like the hardest spot to show you guys but probably should have bent this bracket from the start just this little right here this little metal wire bracket I kind of bent it down and out and it seems to be keeping that brake line off the tire and you know that probably probably would have uh, prevented that little scuff on the fender but hey is what it is some dust on there too there's some proof I was in fact on a gravel road of course right after I washed the bike but uh, that's worth it for the story right so just got some fine dust on everything but Hey, we're cruising, we're making some headway, and uh, just got to fill up this tiny tank and keep going. All right, beautiful morning here. It is day four. Day four on the road. Got to make some good miles today. Might even have to hit the interstate for a while, but we do have about uh, 13, almost 1,400 miles on the bike, which means about 1,000 on the trip, and... Uh, we're gonna get out there and make some miles. Thank God for this beautiful day and uh, the freedom to travel on, on a bike like this. Well, I was doing some regular checks on the bike here, decided to check all the lights and noticed that the brake light, if I press rear brake or grab the front brake here, brake light is not working or it's constant on as I should say, I could see if you look in there both filaments of the bulb are lit the brighter one so brake light is stuck on for whatever reason not sure why um, I did install one of these brake flasher units if you can see it up in here um, so normally I would always suspect you know anything that was changed or added any additional wiring to be the culprit but I just don't really think so in this case um, thought all my connections were sound I do a lot of wiring uh, automotive electrical stuff so pretty confident in that and also that brake flasher just allows the the signal from the brake switch to the wire comes in goes into the flasher creates the flash module and then sends it out to the brake light so I can't see any fault with that wiring that would cause a constant brake light to stay on. You know, if the brake light didn't work, I would think one of those connections might have failed. Or, um, I don't know, but I can't see how any wiring related to that would cause it to stay on. So, what I'm thinking is that the brake switch is stuck. You know, there's these bikes just use a pressure switch. It's actually down here not the easiest thing to get to but um you know it uses pressure from the brake line to uh send a signal out a little little plunger makes contact in there when there's pressure in the brake line and puts a signal out so uh, i don't know it's not real easy to access so i'm gonna just see what i could do to get in there check the wiring on the brake light switch and i'm thinking the actual plunger or something mechanically is stuck to cause this brake light to stay on like that. So I'm gonna check that, maybe tap on it with something, see if I could get it. I tried working the levers, you know, foot lever, hand lever, a bunch of times, but I don't know. I did flush these brakes out several times before I left. I don't know if there's still a little air in there and the actual brake switch got airbound, but I don't know. I'm gonna tear into it, see if we can figure it out. Obviously not something super critical that's gonna stop me in my tracks, but I would definitely prefer uh, that the people behind me know when I'm slowing down, especially on these secondary roads where, you know, you come across somebody making a turn and you go from 55 down to 10 real quick. So I'm going to try to tear into this and uh, see what we find. 
Okay, well, praise God, I think we found the issue pretty quickly at least. Um, here, I'm going to try to do this and film, but I'm going to reach over here and turn the key on and keep you guys looking at the brake light. So, as soon as I turn the key on, you can see our flasher's working, brake light's working, so everything is in fact good back there. But it's just as soon as I turn on the key, we get brake light. So that tells me tells me that the brake switch is stuck or the wiring to it is problematic. So went under here, there's a little protective boot. Looks like it didn't do much to protect it, but sure enough, how well can you see it? Yeah. One of the two wires going to the brake switch has come off its post. So obviously our issue, what I don't understand is um why that's causing the so that contact must open to turn the brake switch off to turn the brake light off so what I don't understand is when I touch this and try to make contact there's no change the brake light is still just constant on so I gotta tear into this a little bit more maybe clean those connections and uh, try to get it reconnected so by God's grace we'll get this fixed and uh, you know either way we're still mobile we'll keep moving so See if we can't figure this out. All right, uh, so just touched this contact. Let's see if you get, guys can see here. Basically, just touched this contact and it broke right off the post. These use a really cheesy little washer just pressed on there to hold this. So uh, that's not good. That's broken now. Probably need a new brake light switch pressure switch but I got to thinking this is just a pressure pressure switch for the rear brake and when I touch these contacts or move them or do anything there's no change this brake light stays on regardless of what I do here plug unplug touch it make contact has no effect on that so that tells me that that's one issue those vibrated loose cheesy little connections but I think the problem with it being stuck on is actually here. This is just an electric switch um, inside this whole assembly here. So I guess I gotta tear into the front one, see what's up with that, and then if I get it to where the brake light releases, I'm still not gonna have brake light off the rear actuation, but at least I'll know that and I could just squeeze front to give myself brake light. So Guess I'm gonna tear into this part. Um, something, something in here where this makes contact is uh, not working. So let me try to figure it out here. Okay, praise God! I think I finally figured it out. So I knew with those wires disconnected from the rear pressure switch and the brake light still staying on, I knew it was a problem with the front brake light switch which uh, did a little research and that lives lives in here in your main switch deal and um, the way that works is let's see if I could show you guys so if you can see the little brass tab right here um, hard to do this with with one hand but the little brass tab on the end of that brake lever applies pressure on this little plunger right here so see that little knob that's actually a switch presses in and out anyway there's two wires oh, shoot I just dropped something all right <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to show you guys but there's two wires dang it I don't know what just fell there's two wires in there and they're just soldered soldered to that switch and they're really close together and somehow some way the solder on the red wire came apart. Didn't look like it melted, but it like, just from vibration, the solder kind of split apart and one half of that solder split and touched the other solder connection and was closing the circuit. So pried that little chunk of solder away with my knife and now the brake light releases. So uh, now I just gotta get it put back together, figure out what I just dropped here and uh, get back on the road. Oh, okay, well, this little barrel that holds the end of the throttle cable is what I dropped, and praise God, got down on my hands and knees, started looking, started praying, and praise God, I happened to see it down there, but got that little piece, now we can uh, start putting her back together. 
Okay, got all this switch back together. Got that little tiny piece of solder pried out of the way with my pocket knife. And what do you know, I'm gonna work the lever up here. We've got brake light again. Off, back on, awesome. So I did uh, tape up these broken connections back at the rear brake light, pressure switch, and uh, we just won't have rear lever brake light activation, but that's totally fine. I know that, and I'll just uh, use the front lever to activate my brake light. It's not stuck on anymore, praise God. I'm a little skeptical about that, that little flake of solder. There's less solder holding that contact up in this switch now, so. I'll just keep checking on it, but as of now, it's working. Tested it several times. Praise God we were able to find that. I mean, only by his grace. I just, once I pulled that switch, once I knew it was the front switch, pulled that apart and looked in there, that plunger that the little tab on the lever was activating, working fine, coming in and out. So I knew it had to be further in the switch, and sure enough, I could see, it's almost like that wire had moved a little, and it split its little glob of solder, and those splits, one of them, was contacting the other glob of solder so there you go your uh one sixteenth of an inch of a piece of solder from something like that not working but awesome good to go now get back on the road we got to make some miles so uh here we go the mighty mississippi out here right on the bank of the mississippi river well okay actually the main channel is just out there you can see it but we are across the Mississippi so uh, we are in Missouri now right on the other side is Illinois in fact as you can see there's some, kind of some cool cliffy bluffs along the that's the main channel just there but nice road nice breeze along the Mississippi here and uh, praise God another state down we're in Missouri now and looks like the brake line is no longer rubbing on the tire that's good the brake light has been working properly check that a couple more times so hopefully smooth sailing now so another state down now we got the big ones missouri and kansas are both pretty wide across so we'll probably be in missouri the better part of today and then uh kansas tomorrow so we're going to uh, keep on trucking, soak in this nice view for a minute, and uh, get back in the old saddle. There you have it. We are officially in Kansas. Still cruising some two-lane blacktop, and uh, bike's doing well. No issues uh, lately here. Just cruising along. I said still on some secondary roads. We were on US 50 for quite a while through Missouri and I did actually break down and get on the interstate for a stretch though did about 70 miles on I-70 and uh, just a good section where there wasn't wasn't many options for secondary roads so just got on the interstate and hammered it for a while and my cruise is just fine was doing about 70 75 on the interstate and uh, you know it's just boring to me I start getting Start getting mesmerized by it. All looks the same. A lot more wind noise. Getting blown around by trucks a little bit. This bike's actually, it feels pretty solid on the interstate. No issues, but I just prefer the back roads. If you have the time, I would definitely always suggest that when you're traveling by bike. And uh, otherwise, everything seems good. The brake, uh, brake light is working consistently. That fix on the brake line has successfully kept that off the tire and the fender. And otherwise, I'm, uh, I'm fighting some allergies. I'm all kind of stuffed up, having to blow my nose through the helmet. You could probably hear that. But aside from uh, fighting some allergies and, you know, lots of gas stops. But other than that, we are cruising. Out here in Kansas, the windmills are spinning and uh, bikes cruising right along. This is uh, Highway 78, I believe. Kind of, kind of some rolling hills here, and I guess Central Kansas. And we're cruising, cruising right along. Awesome weather, and uh, bikes running good. Out here in Kansas, sound a little, 
little lake, I guess old reservoir to stop by. And uh, whew, just had to take a little breather. Man, Kansas is a grind, I'm not gonna lie. Just big state east to west and uh, it's awfully flat. Not a whole lot to look at. Doesn't really matter what road you take. It's uh, it's pretty flat, kind of boring. And uh, notice the old back tire is getting a little squared off. You could feel, you could kind of feel a distinct edge there. I swear that's just from Kansas. I didn't feel that until here recently. But hey, praise God, we're still cruising. Everything's going well. Just uh, just slogging through Kansas here. Got my sights on Lamar, Colorado. Gonna try to make it across the state line today. Although it doesn't really matter. The whole uh, the whole eastern third of Colorado is much the same. We call it West Kansas. So. That's the goal for tonight though, and uh, home tomorrow is the plan. So, might have a little weather moving in. You can see some clouds building out here, but they don't look too threatening, just, just kind of general cloudiness. So, like I said, stopped here to uh, take a little breather, and it's like an old recreation area. You can tell there used to be a campground loop. I actually rode around this little pretty grown, grown over uh, dirt roads out here, but old dam and this is kind of cool they got an old old uh wood-fired cook stove out here not much left of it nothing more than uh shooting target nowadays but kind of cool the wrought iron range company st louis missouri so it's kind of cool they put a put an actual wood-fired cook stove out here i wonder no, I wonder if this was a structure or they had this. Huh, I don't know. Lots of old uh, concrete structures back here. So, walked around a little bit, stretched the legs, and uh, I'm going to get back on the road. But, man, it's been a great trip so far. But I got to say, Kansas is just a grind. I knew it would be and uh, tried to take some more interesting routes. But,. When it comes down to it, it's just a long, flat state. But hey, we're doing it. We're cruising. We've got uh, we've got about 2,000 miles. Yeah, almost 2,100 on the bike itself, and we started with about 450 on it. So should be right around uh, 2,500 on the clock when we're home, and uh, we're getting close. So gonna take another minute here and uh, jump back on the old sporty. Colorado state line, hallelujah. Woo, made it to the state line. Getting a little late here, definitely getting a little tired. And uh, just pushed through that last section of Kansas. I took, uh, this road is 400 west, name of the road. And it was like dead straight for about 40 miles coming out of Garden City, Kansas. And uh, I had this little sporty wound up. I was on a mission at this point, but... Praise God, made it to Colorado. I've got my sights set on a little motel just across the state line, so it's about as far as we're making it tonight, but God willing, we will uh, make it all the way home tomorrow, so oh, I guess I guess the plains have their own beauty. It's weird, it's getting late, but the sun is still so, so high in the sky, but it's also like kind of getting dark like dusk, so I don't know, it's weird out here on the plains. Guess it's got its own beauty, but I'm looking forward to getting into the mountains. I'm going to show you guys some cool stuff, shoot a little footage up there tomorrow, but uh, I've about had it for today. Like I said, Kansas was a grind, but uh, we made it. So into Colorado we go, and uh, one more day on the road. Well, it's a super foggy, misty morning here in Holly, Colorado. Just a little mist hanging in the air, but just enough to be annoying and uh, get on the visor and uh, I don't know, it's kind of borderline. I don't really want to put the rain pants on. It's pretty warm out, but just, yeah, just this dense, foggy mist hanging in the air. So trying to get an early start. They're calling for thunderstorms this afternoon across Colorado and uh, pretty severe one, pretty severe ones at that calling for gusty winds thunderstorms and even hail so 
just trying to get an early start. I don't know if I'm going to be able to take as cool of a route and get all the footage I was hoping to up in the mountains today, but I'm going to get on the road, get an early start, and hopefully beat these storms. Oh yeah, we're into some scenic Colorado now. We're right off Highway 50 uh, in between Canyon City and Salida, so only about 200 miles from home now, and Praise God, the weather's nice at the moment, but I did see some storm clouds approaching uh, at the top of the hill when I could see further west. Saw some uh, pretty threatening clouds out there, so I'm still not going to uh, take too much time here today. Just try to get, just try to get home really and beat the weather. I prefer not to be, not to be caught in a thunderstorm, especially they're saying crazy winds and hail possible. So probably won't be able to share the scenery quite as much as I'd like to but beautiful Arkansas River here Highway 50 is gonna follow the river clear to Salida and then I'll head north uh, probably cut through Leadville so Leadville is about 10,000 feet one of the highest incorporated towns in the US so the bikes already feeling a little sluggish at altitude here so I'm curious how it's gonna do up over Tennessee Pass and through Leadville but so far, so good. We're cruising, and uh, I'm going to keep making miles. Getting close now, guys. Well, had to take cover under some trees. Got some little hail coming down. Not too big, but it's hail. Started bouncing off my helmet, and uh, I ducked for the nearest cover I could see. But that's uh, certainly some hail coming down. And uh, hopefully it passes over pretty quick here. Definitely in the high country now. Sorry for a little wind noise, but we're up here just outside of Leadville and got out of that storm further south. Still got all the gear on though, because it's pretty chilly up here. Like I said, we're like nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet. So I'm gonna keep this stuff on, keep warm. And, uh, boy, it's a shame that Independence Pass is not open yet. They said tentative date is uh, May 31st, so we're just a couple days early. And really, really, I live just on the other side of this range, on the other side of the Collegiate Range. And uh, Independence Pass took, out, out, took off out of Twin Lakes. And uh, really cool twisty road goes up over the top, but... Uh, there's still a ton of snowpack up there, so I can see why they don't have it open yet. They're still plowing and blasting the avalanche chutes and all that. So just a couple days early to be taking Indy Pass. So it's a shame. I, I really just got to get just over on the other side, but we'll have to go past Leadville over Tennessee Pass and then actually get on I-70 for the last little stretch through Glenwood Canyon, and then uh, I'll be getting off in Glenwood Springs. But about 100 miles to go, last 100 miles of the trip, praise God. Uh, the bike's definitely struggling for power up here. Yeah, we've got, oh wow, we've got exactly 2,500 miles on the bike and uh, left Jersey with 450 miles on the clock. So 2,050 miles and uh, about 100 to go. So we'll be at about 2,150 for the whole trip. And uh, man, it's been awesome. Bikes run good for the most part. Like I said, it is uh, struggling for power up here, so might just be a little rich for this elevation. And I did bring, I have other carburetor jets, and I actually have, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I have the, the thumb screw for the altitude adjuster, but I don't know. Definitely don't want to mess with it. Definitely don't want to pull the carb apart right here, right now. So once I get home, there'll be plenty of time for that, and uh, there'll probably be some mods coming for the Sporty here, too, uh, once we safely get it home. So I'm going to enjoy this last stretch of trip and uh, soak in these high country views, and uh, I will uh, I'll catch up with you guys from the home front. And just like that, I'm home. Praise God, all glory to him for a safe trip, relatively trouble-free trip. Uh, I did have to ride through rain last five miles or so, 
I just didn't feel like putting the rain gear back on. Was almost there and uh, just pushed it the rest of the way. But praise God, I know I've said that probably only a hundred times on this video, but truly uh, can't say it enough. All glory to Him. I always trust in the Lord for provision, protection, and just to lead me through life, whether it's riding a motorcycle cross country or just navigating all the the storms and trials of life. So hope if anything comes through on this video, it's um, just that God is faithful. His love for us is steadfast, and uh, that could be yours as well if you put your trust in Jesus Christ. If you if you know that you're a sinner, you can't do everything right. You don't have everything in your control, but you could trust in the one who does. So that's uh, that's the biggest message I would want to put out there, if anything. But the old uh, barn find sportster did just fine. Let's see, we left with 450 miles on it. Now it's got 2604, so 2100, just about 2150 miles, and uh, the old sports here does great, you know, a little lacking in power when it's all loaded down and really hitting the, the big hills, but aside from that, you know, with a couple modifications, I don't think it's a bad bike to travel on before, I mean, my experience is mostly dual sports, off-road bikes, and I actually did quite a few miles on a KLR 650, so... You know, something like this is just fine for me. Biggest thing is this small tank, but, um, you know, you could flip to reserve and go quite a bit further. I never actually, not once did I dip into those extra fuel bottles. Um, never did have to use them. I switched to reserve countless times, but never actually had to use those. But just having that extra fuel with me was a huge stress reliever and uh, just gave me that peace of mind where, you know, I'm running on reserve and I'm not going to... If I do run out and the bike stalls, I'm not dead in the water at that point. So don't regret taking them with me. You know, maybe just one in the saddlebag would be fine for most people. But otherwise, uh, you know, we all know this Harley stock Harley seats aren't the most comfortable. So we had our double stacked foam plus gel pad, and that certainly helped. I was definitely glad to have the highway pegs be able to stretch out. And uh, the little fairing is just enough to keep the wind off my chest. And, uh, you know, that's about it. I'm sure there's more mods you could do to make a bike like this even more comfortable. And uh, having a, a bigger tank certainly wouldn't hurt things. But phone mount was super nice. I also really like this little charger that, of course, it doesn't show on video. But shows your battery voltage, which is nice, too. So that was nice to have. And uh, praise God. I'll say it one more time. Just all glory to him for keeping me safe, for blessing me with the freedom to be able to do a trip like this and uh, and the means to be able to, to travel on a Harley Davidson across the good old US of A. So thanks for watching guys. I hope, uh, hope uh, this just encourages you to get out there. I would say this, you know, if you're hesitant about taking a trip, I would just say, number one, go ahead and do it. Number two, give yourself plenty of time. It's always best to just take your time you know obviously for safety reasons but also for just to be able to enjoy the trip and not stress about how far to make it each day and uh don't listen to the naysayers you know do your homework go prepared but uh at the end of the day just go for it so god bless you guys thank you for watching thank you for coming along on this journey 2100 miles on a barn fine sportster I guess that was the official break-in for this bike, and lots more to come with this, lots of mods um, I've got planned now that the bike is back here, and um, I'll, probably, I'll probably do another video too, kind of going over in detail what worked on the trip, what didn't work, what I really learned on a road trip this long and this far. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more sportster content and those other upcoming videos, and uh, God bless you guys. I'll see you on the next one.